I have a very special episode for you today. Now, if you are a follower of my channel, you would have seen this, this beauty. This is called the Lapwing Collar by Alice Starmore. I made this a few years ago with a kit from her website using her Hebridean yarn. And it is my favorite piece out of all of my knits. And um, every time I wear it, I get comments. Um, it looks amazing in photos, goes, goes with so many outfits as well. So yeah, I just cannot stop raving about it. Every time I post about this on Instagram, I have a friend who always comments on it and he's inspired me to make a neon version of the Lapwing Collar. So why don't you keep watching to follow along my process of making a new neon lapwing color. Make sure you watch to the end to see the finished result and an honest review from one of my kids. Here's my napkin number one. It's got four layers of feathers. You've got the longer ones, slightly shorter, got your two shorter layers and a beautiful collar with all the um, accent colors included in there. So I've started making some samples, trying to figure out where I'm gonna place all the colors. What I know for sure is I want the white. This light green here, I want this all to be white because um, I like white closer to my face. And I think that'll bring the accent colors out really well. I'm not sure where to place these. Um, what to do with the colors here though so i've made some samples and maybe i'll just make a lot of different colors place them on and see how it goes hmm, don't know i think i need to make quite a few more little feathers to figure out the placement However, I'm quite liking that I did bold, crazy colours, really strong colours down the bottom, and then maybe gradually become lighter and lighter towards the neck with more of this lighter variegated yarn. Let's see how it goes. show you how I make one of these feathers for my lapwing collar. There is a range of um, there is a range of different sizes you have to make. So I've got a whole bunch of 55 stitches here and I've got to make um, 95 stitch, 75 stitch, 65 and a whole bunch of 55. So these are some of the colors I've already made and then later on I'm going to pin them up. But I thought you thought I'd show you how I make one of these sleeves. So for the 55 stitch, first I cast on 55 stitches. This is pre-blocking. Um, before blocking, it curls quite a bit. So I will need to aggressively block them like that. So around the edge is the cast on edge. That's why you definitely don't want to make it too tight. So that's 55 stitches casted on. We're going to turn it around and start. First row is right row and right side, and we're going to purl them. We're going to purl the total amount minus three. So, oh, there's grass in this. 55 minus three is 52. Half of that is 26. So we go one, two, three. Okay, so that's 26. What we're going to do for the next three, we're going to do a three stitch center decrease. So slip two together, slip two of them as if to knit, knit the next one and pull these two over. I'm in editing and I just realized I did not get that shot in frame at all. So I'll show you my three stitch decrease. So pretend I have already purled 26 stitches. This is my three center stitches and I need to do a decrease. And this is the right row. So I will slip two together as if to knit, knit one, and then slip these two over. 
pointy's needle will be better. So you can see now three stitches has become one and it is completely aligned to the middle. And then you would just purl the rest. First row is done. Second row is wrong side, so it'll be a purl row. And so we would purl 25 because we had a decreased one. Once we get to the center, um, we leave three stitches in the center and then do a two stitch decrease again. Um, but this time we'll be doing it purl wise. I'm almost at the center. So I can see this is the center stitch here. So I do a three decrease. I've got two here, right? So my needle goes from the back and I slip two, purl one. And then I bring these two over this middle stitch. So yeah, so that's the same as the center, um, center leaning, two stitch decrease, just from the reverse side. I'm sure there'll be many other well-explained videos online. I am not very good at explaining. Purl to the end. Uh, once the purling is done, this will be our setup row or setup row edge edges for the feather. Okay, row three, We're back to the right side. So you can see we've got kind of like a garter stitch edge. We've created the garter stitch edge. Now we're going to stocking stitch. So we stocking stitch, knit all the way to the middle, and then we do another three stitch decrease. So basically we just do that eight times. What you can also do is change colors in the middle of this, which is what I did here. So this one, I changed color three times. I did two rows of yellow, six rows of orange, and in the center row, I used pink. I'm not sure how it will look as a whole yet. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of feathers and start pinning them on to see what kind of color story I create and um, if it works or not. Because at the moment, I still have no idea if it's going to work out. All right, we have the center stitch now, right there. So I do slip two, knit one, and pull them over. Two stitches decrease with a nice center line. And knit to the bottom, knit to the end. Row four, same, we purl all the way through, except for the center three, we do decrease. All right, I've done my eight rows and I'm ready to do the last row now. So as you can see, because of the center decreases, every single row is looking like kind of a V. If I move the needle over here, you can see it's a V shape. So the last row, we actually just bring the middle together and becomes a leaf. So I'll show you how to do that. This one, I'm not using any other contrast colors. They are all going to be yellow. So, Knit, 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 all the way to the middle. So now I've got the middle. So usually I would do a three decrease, right? So that's what I would do again. Let's say center leaning decrease. So instead of keep going, I move this over and I move this stitch over as well. And I do it again. Slip two, knit, slip the two over. And I do it again, moving these two needles from my right to my left. I slip two, knit one, slip two over. So you can see I'm now closing this V in the middle. Slip two, knit one, slip over. And I do that all the way to the end. And that's pretty much it. That is my feather. It's actually quite easy to make. Last stitch done. So it's one stitch left. Ta-da! There is my feather. So yeah, it's not 
hard to make at all. It's just、um, you need a lot of patience because we have to make a hundred of these. And I think what makes it special with,、um, with the lapwing collar and Alice Starmore's design is a combination of colors and、um, just the whole how she came up with the designs. So clever. I have committed to making two of these a day, so I can get them done. Otherwise, they'll never be done. So let's get cracking and make another one. Okay. So I've been pinning some of these feathers on my mannequin, and I hate it. It just looks weird. It's、mm, it doesn't work. What do I do? Especially the center pieces. I think I have to go back to the original lapwing and copy. The Alice's design ideas as much as possible because mine is not working. So I'm going to copy hers to make it symmetrical.、Um, so in the middle, one feature piece. I have these two the same, these two the same, and then maybe solid colors all the way around. Yeah, I think I'll try that. Firstly, I'm going to draw it out on my iPad. Okay, we have a plan. I have the front pieces and the back pieces all mapped out. Luckily, I've already made most of these, and I only have to discard two feathers.、Um, I thought since I'm rearranging the, all the colors,、uh, I'm going to have to start from scratch. But I can repurpose most of these, so、um, I think now it's going to go a lot quicker. Because before I was just making it up on the spot, which was stopping me from starting, because I was unsure of which colors to use. And every time I, you know, made things on the spot, made things up on the spot, it doesn't work out for me. I need plan. I need color mapping. I need a lot of planning. So with this plan, I think we are now going to proceed a lot faster. Maybe this lapwing color will be done this half of the year. Yay! I have to make about twenty of these for the third layer of the lapwing collar. You can see these are、uh, these ones here. I'm making them mainly in the speckle as the main part, and with a contrast color right in the middle. And as I'm going along, I'm doing a little tally mark on my one note. I'm making good progress. It's almost, it's it's kind of halfway there. I've done the first layer now in all of my solid brighter colors. So in the middle, I've got some contrasting feathers. On the sides, they're a bit more solid color. The second layer, I've got some contrasting ones in the middle and center back. And then for these ones, I've got this、um, speckled yarn. I think it's like in the long grass. Can't remember. Speckled yarn as a base with some contrasting center step. Um, the goal is to gradually go lighter as we go up and have a white collar. I don't know if it's working. It's looking a little bit dirty to me. I'm really hoping once the white bit is knitted up, it'll look better.、Um, in the meantime, I'm going to give it a wash and block because it will take a while for it to block out, and I'm going to start knitting it up and see how it goes. For the white, I have chosen the Brooklyn Tweed Peary that I had in stash. It is a little bit more yellow, so it's a bit more harmonious with the rest. Whereas this Bengal Woolen Mills White is too stark and stain. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't blend well with the rest of them. Let's see how it goes. I think. I mean, usually row in the pattern, the rows three and four are different colors, and I'm not sure if I'm going to make them both white. Is it going to be too much white? Let's start knitting it up and give it a try. I guess. Hopefully it works, and hopefully I will like it better.
blocking mat is going to fit on these feathers. I can't believe I fit it all in. So here, um, with a bit of maneuvering and Tetris skills. Oh no, there's one more left. All right, let's see where I can fit this one. I thought I got it all in. All right, one more Tetris, and then <laughs> we'll have it all in. Um, but uh, yeah, it's now ready to dry. And after this is dried, I will start knitting them up and see how it goes. So I've been working on joining the first and second layers together and I'm working, um, the next step is doing some knit rows before I join the third layer. I haven't decided what I want to do with the third layer yet. At the moment, I don't hate it. It's turning out surprisingly uh, better than I expected, actually. So I'm thinking maybe the third layer I would use this speckle yarn and then the top layer in the collar will use white. In the meantime, there are so many ends to weaving. Uh, I mean, all of this will be hidden underneath anyway, so you can't really see. I have been roughly weaving the ends in, not through the feathers, but just through the join lines. You can see this is quite thick here, but I did that with my previous lap wing and looked fine. So I'm going to continue to do that. There's only a few left. So each time I change color, there are two ends. Uh, um, especially some of the feathers, there are four colours and there's so many ends to weaving. I've got a whole bunch of these little cut-off bits. They're too short to be used again, so they're going in the bin at the moment. I probably can keep them as a filling. I know people keep ends as stuffing, but I'm not going to do that because I don't make toys. don't have the patience for them. Okay. I think that's all done. Yay! All right, a quick preview. I'll do more during when the um, I'll do more previews when there's daylight and it's easy to see. Here's one that's center back. The blocking worked on some, but not so good. So I might have to give some of these pieces a bit more of a steam block. Looking pretty good. Not hating the colours, don't love it, but not hating it. So once I finish, only two more rows here of stocking net, and I think I'll use this colour, this speckle yarn, to do the little feathers, which is, yeah, I think I'll use speckle yarn to do layer three, and then we'll use white to do that light green. The white will be layer four, and the main part of the collar, using these colours as the speckle bits. In between so just very basic color work here but we're getting there the majority of the work is done now I just have to make I don't know 100 of these little ones and join them on but we're finally getting somewhere I finished knitting the first and the second layer of the lapwing collar a few weeks ago and I haven't touched it since it's just it feels like such a big project so I keep putting it down and not starting but I have started again now hey ah! But I have started again. So the first and layer I put together um, last week, you can see some of the feathers have already started curling, even though even though I have blocked it. I think that's because the yarn is a lot softer than the Alistair Moorhebridean. 
So maybe this is the wrong yarn choice. It is definitely curling. I um I think I'll try and give another steam block. If that doesn't work, the worst offenders I may just have to re-knit, especially this long back one. This should be the centerpiece, like on my lap when it is a centerpiece. So if this keeps curling because this blue is really thin and soft, I definitely will think about re-knitting it. I think it shouldn't be too hard. I will just unpick it from here carefully and then knit a new one and graft it on. And I will have to use a thicker yarn to hold the shape. I think the pink one, this Olan yarn is a lot, a lot thicker. Oh, except these two are pink. I have to think about it. So now I'm about to start the third layer here, which is this dark green short feather layer. Initially, I was thinking of using white to knit it, but I've decided I'm going to continue using this life in the long grass. I'm going to continue to use this life in the long grass speckled yarn because um, I think it'll create a better transition. And then this um, lighter green will use white. Yeah, I think that'll look a lot nicer. And I have started <laughs> milk moustache. And I have started yesterday. So the pattern says I have to make 22 of these little feathers, and I've did nine yesterday. It's, it's a bit fiddly, and I like to knit things continuously in flow while watching TV. So this is not something I can um, knit mindlessly, I have to think about it. That's therefore, every time I think about starting this one, it takes so long to start. But I've made nine of this. After each one, I put these on a holder instead of casting off like the other feathers. And then I'm going to put, a, put on a piece of scrap yarn and give it a good steam. Um, and then when the 22 are finished, we'll knit it onto the collar. Yeah, it's starting to look really good. And the speckles, now that the yarn, the ball's getting smaller, the speckles are showing a lot better on this Live in the Long Grass yarn. And I'm liking it a lot more because I like neons, if you can't tell. So yeah, this is starting to look a bit more cute. Um, there's a lot of yellow in the yarn still, but however, I think it'll look great once it's all done. I'll keep you posted. Finished layer three. It looks like a little garland, and as you can see, I just um, gave it a bit of a steam press as well. So now it's ready to be knitted onto the collar. So the collar, what I have to do is lay this on top of the collar, right way facing me, and then I just knit two together, one by one. Um, I'm always a little bit scared when I'm doing these knit, knit two togethers in case something falls off the back needle and I don't see when I'm when I'm pulling any thread through. So I'm going to do this very slowly and carefully and check the feather as I'm going along to make sure they are lined up properly. So the third layer and the second layer are supposed to offset each other. So that means the center of the second layer should line up with the edge of the third layer. So you know then. They offset basically and they look like a really nice overlapping pattern. It's getting there and I'm really excited. However, while I'm steam pressing the first couple of layers, I can see it is this one is still curling up a little bit. It's a lot better, but it's still curling up. So I think this is something I'm going to have to steam press all the time, every time I want to wear it, which is fine, which is fine. It's better than having to knit the whole thing again and regret making the yarn choices that I did, but I think I will be able to make it work. When it comes to worst, maybe I'll starch it. Do people starch wool? Maybe. I don't know. Or um, what if I just crochet? Oh, two stitches just fell off. What if I just crochet something on the back to pull it backwards? I don't know. We'll have a look. We'll see. Once I finish this third layer, I attach it on, we'll try it on again, 
and then only one more layer of feathers to go which will be the white layer once i finish the white layer it'll just be the neck part it's going well i've um been working on more of the color so after i join i have to do some stocking stitch and some decreases as because obviously the color slowly goes in and now i have finished um all the speckle yarn parts and i started on the white yarn so i'm going to do four rows of this white yarn which is uh which is this one here. It's the Peary by Brooklyn Tweed. It's a slightly off-white, which I think matches better with these. So, um, yeah, after I do a couple more rows of the white, I'll have to make 22 more of these baby feathers, attach them all, and then I can start doing the upper neck piece. Almost there. This is a colossal project. It actually doesn't take very long. I just keep putting it down because it's a fiddly thing that needs concentration. And as I mentioned, I like to be in flow and like this, you know, just stocking, 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 I can watch TV. So when something that needs a lot of concentration, I tend to put it aside. Or something that's repetitive, you know, making 22 of these little things. I don't have the stamina to finish it all in one go. Um, I think this is going to go quick now. I can see the finish line, so I will persevere and finish this. There are a couple more projects that's in my mind. I haven't swatched for it yet, so I definitely want to quickly finish this so I can start swatching and start my next project. At the moment, with this one and my scrappy blanket, they're not portable, so I can't really take them out to knit anywhere else. So if I start another garment, um, then I'll be able to take it with me. Although I'm at the stage where I have so many garments, I don't know if I should knit, knit more. Uh, I live in the subtropics, how will I ever wear all of these jumpers? Speaking of living in the subtropics, um, I love fruit and knitting. I have mentioned it is one of my favorite podcasts. And um, I just saw yesterday in their new video, Andrea is organizing her first knitting retreat. And I have always wanted to go to a knitting retreat. And I'm so tempted. However, the knitting retreat is in Costa Rica. Costa Rica is in Central America. I'm in Queensland. To get there, it is at least two days and three flights. It is a beautiful tropical country, island, beaches, rainforest, uh, but we have all of that here in Queensland. I can drive one hour and I'll be at the beach, drive a different direction an hour and I'll be at the rainforest. So I've never been tempted to go to any tropical islands like Hawaii or Central America. So to fly that far to go to a knitting retreat, it's, yeah, hopefully maybe She'll organize another one in the future, and that's a little bit closer to her home, Australia. Andrea, please have a knitting retreat in Australia. I don't think there are any here. There's just not enough knitters, but it'd be really cool to have a knitting retreat with some cool friends. Yeah, because I would love to meet more knitting people here and have a knitting community around me in Queensland. Today, it's finally in the 25 degrees, so that means I get to start wearing my transseasonal knitwear. And I've got my Carpe Diem beaded sweater on today. I went for a really long walk. Because I've been staying at home for a few months now and not doing much apart from knitting, I've put on a little bit of weight and I'm not feeling very good in my shoulders and my hips. Um, so I've joined a gym and I've made a commitment. I'm going to now start being a bit more active and look after my health and not sit at home and, you know, become a lazy blob. So this morning I went for a walk around the city before my um, lunchtime event and it would be at least six, seven Ks and nearly 10 down steps. And it was, yeah, I was a bit tired. And this jumper became very hot because apart from the wool, it's also got you know, 300 grams of beading. So it was very warm. However, I did get lots of compliments when I went to my lunch event. And of course, a lot of people knew me and know that I like to knit. So when they saw it, they immediately knew, knew that I knitted it. Even the lady at the museum, um, she came over and she said, oh, look, can I touch your jumper? It's so nice. And when I told her I had made it, she was completely amazed. So yes, it always feels nice when people appreciate the things you make. But back to the main story. 
I have been working on the fourth layer of my lac wing. Getting there. I think there's only maybe five or six feathers to go. And then no more feathers. I am definitely very feathered out. No more feathers for me. Um, once this layer is done, I'll add it to my collar behind me some, somewhere there and start knitting up the actual collar part. So we are getting there. I've paid for another pattern that I plan to make, but um, I am now making a commitment to not start another one. Oh, this one's backwards. I've made a commitment not to start another project until this lap when color is done because I've spent so long on it and I keep putting it off, it will be done. But yeah. It's May the 4th today. Um, if you know, you know, it is Star Wars Day. My boys love Star Wars and they watch all the movies, maybe at least every six months. So that's what they're doing now, watching Star Wars once again. And they really could recite every single line. My husband is the biggest Star Wars geek. The amount of Star Wars Lego that we have in this house is absolutely insane. Like, insane. Anyway, that is his thing. Mine is knitting. And I have finished the fourth layer of the lap wing collar. I'm really happy with how the colors have turned out. As I mentioned many times, I have been unsure about my color selection pretty much the whole time. Um, but now that it's all together, I cannot be more happy. I think it's worked out really well. From colorful to speckled to a bit more of a white, the transition is very smooth and everything goes really well together. And yeah. I'm happy now. So now the next part is knitting back and forth of the neck neck collar part. And this part is back and forth and not in the round because the back needs to have an opening so I can put my head in. And yeah, so the back is the opening and then we do a little pick up stitch border and putting a whole bunch of buttons. I haven't even started thinking about the buttons. I'm halfway through a row, but this is the back and forth. I have to do about six rows of these. Once it's attached, we will be doing the rest of the neck collar as one piece. And that's going to be a little bit heavy to hold on to for a while, but that's okay. And for the main part, it's basically a white base with some lines of uh, one by one color work. And the color work is done on the right side and the wrong side. So I thought I'd show you how I do stranded color work using two hands. Keep watching if you want to see. This is one by one stranding on the wrong side. I have one strand in my left hand, then I have one strand on my right. This is the way I like to do it. It's quite fast and easy. My left hand, I just push that yarn down when I'm using the right. So yeah, pretty much when I knit, I use all 10 of my fingers. Either they're stabilizing the needle, or holding the yarn tension, or um, straining the yarn while it's knitting. I probably don't need that stitch marker anymore. It was for when I was casting on to help me count the stitches. Bye-bye. Almost finished. Look, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It looks so good. However, I need to go back in and fix a few things. Because I was so eager to get this finished this morning, I rushed a few finishing details and they're not quite right. For example, I didn't sew the buttons on properly and you can see this edge is much higher than that edge. Eh, need to re-sew the buttons. And also, the bottom layer of the neck band here, I had trouble with the original lap wing as well, it curls up. So I tried to sew it down a little bit, this green bit here, but I haven't ironed it yet. So now you can see it's not sitting quite flat. So I'm going to unpick this hand sewing, give it a steam, and then try to sew it down again. But otherwise, it's all done. So I think we're going out this afternoon to a birthday party, so I may not be able to get it done today, but it'll definitely be done tomorrow. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. And yesterday I was having a chat with mum, and I've got my whole Alice Darmore collection here. So the lap wing is designed by Alice Darmore. This is Metal Sweet by Alice Darmore that I bought. Um, I bought a kit online and just looks so good. Unfortunately, it's not a it's not a color that's suitable for Asians to wear. So it's just sitting around looking pretty and not being worn. I've got my Jane Seymour there, and of course I've got my original lap wing and my original lap wing. 
This is my Alice Pod, Alice Starmore collection now. All three of these are made with her yarn. And of course, this one's not made with her yarn. I was wearing the ladder jumper yesterday by Nora Gone, and I used the bog bean, which is a green, green yarn here to make it, and it was perfect. Mum wanted to make the ladder as well, but I didn't have anything similar in my stash. Um, the Hebridean yarn is quite toothy, and everything I have in my stash currently are very smooth. So I went online and we looked at the color choices from virtual yarns, and it was really hard to see on screen, as you know. So luckily, because of all of these three projects, I pretty much have all of the Hebridean yarn color sampled here. So we just had to choose one of the colors from here. And mom chose a dark blue. It's called Kaluna. It's one of the blues here. And um, I bought another kit as well to make um, another vest out of the Tudor Roses book. And I chose Lapwing, which is a green blue. So once it arrives, I'll show you. But yes, very happy with my Alice Starmore collection and even more happy with this Lapwing color. I'm gonna see if I can get it finished before we go to this birthday party. Probably not, but it's almost there. The finish line is near. You like it? Yeah. Yeah, once it's done, we'll get you to model it and then we'll talk about it some more. Is that okay? A little bit itchy. I don't think it's very itchy because the white part here is a very long itchy wool. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And this is why I have to sew this, um, this band down because it just curls up ridiculously. I've already given the steam, but there's no way it's staying down. So I'm doing a bit of hand tack to pull this green bit down to cover the top of these leaves. I don't know if it's because of my tension or just the way it's knit. And it did happen to my original lap wing as well, where this curled up a lot and I remember tacking it down. This one is a lot worse, unfortunately, um, because my green yarn is Jameson Smith. It's a lot thicker than the Peary by Brooklyn Tweet. And I think that is one of the reasons why it's pushing this curling up. Anywho, that is why I'm doing some hand tacking to push this down. Ta-da! My lap wing neon is finally finished. Yay! That's very dusty. Thank you. After many, many months, I have finally put down my foot and said I'm going to finish this lap wing this month and I'm not going to start another project until it's done. And I have stuck to my gun and it has happened because it is done. Just ignore the child labor in the back. It's labor day. <laughs> yes, and I'm making him work on labor day. Thank you, don't forget every single slat. <sighs> um, I had just finished sewing the last button yesterday and we had to go out to a birthday party. So I wore it. It was a nine year old's roller skate party and um, it was a perfect weather for it. It wasn't very hot. And there was a random person who wanted to compliment me on my beautiful color. Now, there have been many, many mistakes. I mean, not mistakes, many, many lessons learned throughout the making of this color, many. Let's start with the things I worked. The first thing that worked is I am really happy with how the colors all turned out. They, um, you saw in the beginning of the video, I was very unsure of my color choices. It looked really messy and dirty and uncoordinated, just um, like I didn't have a plan, which I didn't. Eventually I decided to use the speckle and then white to gradually fade into the lighter color towards the top. And I think that worked out really well. I think this part looks amazing. I really like whites and neons working together. And I think it just takes away all of the messiness underneath. Um, I really like the Peary. I think this is the right yarn choice. I really like the white and the neons together. Um, I used some stash button to finish the back. And I think they work really well. The color, it's an off-white and it was just the perfect fit. Um, and the speckle yarn, I've had this speckle yarn for, for a long time and I never used it because it has a really strong green tinge to it and I think it worked really well in this instance. I think these are the only things that worked well for me. There were many, many things that did not work well. Firstly, yarn choice. There is a reason that Alice Darwell designed this using her Hebridean yarn because it, it is very toothy, it holds its shape and the heather look really matches the tone of um, the design. So this original lap wing, um, I used Alice Darmore's Hebridean 2-ply as a kit from her website. 
so all of the original colors that she chose. And it just looks luxurious. It looks rich, it looks expensive, it looks well put together. My color choices and my, my yarn choices here is a whole different story. Firstly, I use too many different types of yarns. Um, I've got some, the oranges and yellows, they were linen quill. Then I have this single ply Life in the Long Grass. I've got some Jameson Smith. And this one I think is Lovey and May Felix. And they were all different. And the only correct yarn I chose was the Jameson Smith because that's a 2 the yarn similar to the Hebrid Inn. The rest, they were just too soft, hence the curling up. It doesn't hold the shape at all. It doesn't look well finished because the leaves keep curling up. The second thing is, I think the color choices, even the bright neons, they're not expensive looking neons. So mom said it looks like a toy, and I think it does. It's cute and fun, but it's not expensive looking because the colors are not rich, especially when put together. Another mistake you can probably see here. I'm pretty sure this is a different size to this one. And I just couldn't be bothered recounting the stitches. And these two are right in the front, so yeah, this one's way longer. Um, tension. I did do an tension gauge, so the neck is actually a little bit too loose. Other than that, I think it's fine. Yeah, it, it is a really fun piece. It is not the same as my original Lapwing. However, I'm really proud that I stuck to finishing it after so many months of put, picking it up, putting it down. It's not something that you can take with you on trips or in front of TV. It requires lots of concentration, constantly reading the pattern to make sure I'm still on the right track, um, putting, joining the layers together. No, again, full concentration. I wouldn't say I'm disappointed, but definitely lessons learned. And I do think it's really cute. It, it really, it will be a conversation piece if I wear it out. And um, you know, and someone did inspire me to make this colourful version of the collar. So when I was knitting it, I did think about gifting it to that person as a wedding present. I hope you enjoyed watching my journey of making the lapwing collar. And it inspires you to make something like this as well. If you do, I do recommend, recommend buying the kit of the Virtual Yarns website. It is a company that's owned by Alice Starmore. She sells her yarns and her designs on there. If you are making the lapwing and you have any questions, just email me because I've made it twice now and I'll be happy to share some of my experiences. So I hope you like this video and catch you again soon. This is my review of the lapwing neon. Um, it's not itchy. It looks cool. It look make me look like a bird, and it's very colorful and vibrant. I did make another mistake here in the first row of the color work. It's supposed to be a row of knit and a row of pearl, and I did a little tutorial to show you how I did purling from the wrong side stranded. However, that was supposed to be a knit row, so I have filmed another tutorial to show how I knit from the wrong side and stranding through the back. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. This is how I do knitting from the wrong side while stranding on the wrong side as well. So I will move the yarn forward to do, no. I will move the yarn to the back of the needle to do my knit, then I bring the yarn forward, then I bring the second yarn to the back of the needle to knit, and then bring that yarn forward. So each time I bring the yarn forward, it's actually the wrong side of the fabric. Therefore I'm stranding from the back.